Hey everybody, this is Eric Stark with the RV Maintenance and Education Show at RadioArizonaRV.com. And as a reminder, you can check out these podcasts or listen to them at iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Deezer, any of the major podcast channels. You can connect to the RSS feed and listen to the podcast on the device of your preference or you can just simply go to radio arizona rv.com and listen to any episode you want to they're all there so whatever you want to do you can connect and listen how you want to how you're comfortable so today is episode number 47 and in today's episode i'm going to be talking about stabilizing for fifth wheel trailers and travel trailers and I know a lot of RVs, or I should say trailers, come with stabilizing jacks on them, stabilizing legs, whatever you want to call that. And that's, But we're going to get into it. Um, kind of, I bring it up because customers come into the store, bring it up. It's a conversation that probably takes place weekly. So it's not something that everybody needs to learn about, but it's a nice refresher course. And even if you have problems with your scissor jacks, your stabilizing legs, whatever it might be, you know, some simple solutions to take care of some problems. And then the next episode, I'm going to get into leveling or uh, leveling pads, blocks, things like that. So this is for stabilizing. Episode 48 will be about leveling. So they're kind of tied together, but there's not a space, enough space in one show to cover both topics here. But also, you know, I, a lot of things happen every day in life, right? Um, we all face adversity. We face problems. We face this. We face that. But there's a lot of good things that happen every day as well. But, you know, I get a lot of phone calls from customers. And this is kind of off subject. But I want to, you know, bring out some points here. We have a lot of people that are looking for used parts. And recently, a customer called us because they found something we were selling on eBay. And it was a end cap for a carefree flight out on him. And we had them on eBay for about $24 plus shipping. The shipping was $8.50, I think. So these caps are not available anymore. So our price was based on our cost. It wasn't based on they're not available anymore. You know, it is what it is. That's this, our cost is this much. We mark it up, and that's the price. So the customer gets a hold of me who's looking at one. Um, we had one left. He needed a right and a left, and we had one or the other, but we didn't have both. So he's calling and he's looked all over the internet and he told me about a junkyard that he um, checked with who happened to have one. And they had the complete slide out on him. It had the end caps and they would sell him an end cap for 200 bucks. And he told me the name of the junkyard. I confirmed it, $200. And that's not the first time I've heard of stuff like that. Um, you know, sometimes these junkyards, you go calling around and you're looking for something used, be careful. And I'm not knocking them. There's some of these salvage yards. I mean, there's not a lot of them. They do have a place. And, you know, needing something is one thing, but getting taken to the cleaners on it is another. I mean, $200 for this end cap, that's crazy. You know, I would never pay that much for it. So that's just, you know, one of the things that takes place where I hear from customers quite often. And so... You know, be cautious as you purchase things, whether it's from a junkyard, an RV store, you know, it's Amazon, eBay. Make sure you're paying the right price for something. Make sure that it has a warranty. You know, if you're buying something used, you know, make sure it's the right thing before you buy it. Have the person send you pictures if they don't have good pictures on their website or if you're talking to more of the phone. Be certain of it because sometimes after the sale, you won't get your money back. And there's a lot of people, businesses out there that are shady. And the RV industry is an easy niche for a lot of guys to get into. There's a lot of theft. There's a lot of things being sold on the Internet that the only way I can see they get, they, they're on that website is because they're stolen from a manufacturer from a dealership. When you see a, a motor, let's say a Power Gear motor that retails for seven or $800 and someone's selling a new one for 200 bucks, and they only have one and they don't have a website and they're on eBay, you know, is there a warranty? Is it stolen? I don't know, but it seems pretty odd that someone would have one at that price. And that we hear about this all the time. So be cautious. And I'm not saying everybody's a thief and stealing stuff, but be cautious on what you purchase and make sure there's a warranty. You know, we've been doing this stuff for a long time in a brick and mortar business. We've been selling on the internet for, you know, 20 years. 
and we take care of our customers. We have a good reputation because of that on eBay. You know, we're a whatever seller. You know, we have a great rating. We have almost a zero return rate or problem rate. Actually, there's only been one problem that I can think of in the last two years since we've been selling on eBay. And that wasn't even our fault. You know, the customer, you know, went to eBay and made a false claim and they took his side. But, you know, that's me saying that, but that's, you know, I still hold my ground on, but that's one thing we've had in two years. We take care of our customers. So keep that in mind. Customer service still is important today. Price is not everything. You know, you can buy it cheap, but are you going to have a warranty or you can overpay and really regret it later on. So be cautious. And I'm not saying you, you have to price shop everything. Just make sure the price is reasonable. You know, all the, you know, that it's just a reasonable price. So that's, you know, one of the things that came up. Another thing that I was thinking about too is GPSs. A lot of our viewers have GPSs. I mean, everybody has them for traveling, you know, tells you where to go. They're a great, great tool. Now I have a handheld Magellan GPS and this company just flat out pissed me off. They, you know, they just very deceptive. They tried to charge me $128 to update it. And it was a very weird thing, the whole transaction. And as I looked online, waiting for all this to take place, this update, you pay one day to a company in the United Kingdom, and then there's no other contact. And so you're not sure you call up the company and their phone just rings and rings and rings or you get an answer and they don't know what you're talking about. And I did a little research on Magellan and they have customer horrible reviews, horrible reviews. And I'm not saying to boycott Magellan. I'm just saying, be careful. You know, from here on out, I won't buy Magellan. I have a Garmin GPS as well for my vehicle. I like the handheld for doing four wheeling, going out off into the desert, the mountains, things like that, overlanding. From here on out, I'm going to go with Garmin. I'll never buy a Magellan GPS again because my experience, and I'm not saying to boycott them, just, again, be sure of what you're purchasing. Be sure of, like, updates. I had to call the credit card company and dispute the charge, and they were pretty certain it was fraud, and it was about two weeks later, you know, I get an email from this same company who's attached to Magellan. There, You get to their website from Magellan's website. It's their tech support side, you know, saying, let's go ahead and update your thing now. And they wanted access to my computer. And, you know, I was like, forget it. You know, we're, this ain't happening. So just be cautious there. So now getting back to what I originally started at, um, leveling for fifth wheels and travel trailers. I guess I have too much time to myself and I, you know, want to share things that I, I experienced. And so you guys are it. So I talked to you about it. But, you know, there's a lot of things that customers talk about, and that's why I share some of this stuff. And I'm keeping a list here of things that maybe I feel are relevant for RVers, um, maybe not life things, but RVers, little hacks to make your life a little bit easier when you're looking at parts, buying things. And, you know, that goes right along with stabilizing your fifth-wheel trailer, your travel trailer. And I call them that because that's what they are. You know, a lot of people refer to RVs as just that broad term RV or I have a camper conversations start out kind of clunky when you say you have a camper because there was a time when there was something called a camper. It was called an overhead camper and everybody referred to it as a camper. So try to be specific when you're calling around, looking for parts, talking to somebody so they know exactly what you have. I have a fifth wheel. I have a travel trailer. I have a pull behind trailer. I have a cab over camper. I have a motor home, a Class A motor home, a Class C motor home. All right, so done, done with that, my little rant there. <clears throat> so now, most fifth wheels, most travel trailers come with some sort of stabilizer on them, and that's just what they are. They're designed for stabilizing the trailer. You know, there's going to be one in each corner in the usual scenario, or almost in the corner. It's going to be mounted to the frame, you know, close to the rear, close to the front on the right and left-hand side. Now, a fifth wheel trailer has the landing gear in front, so you have two legs right there. Then generally in the rear, you're going to have a stabilizing leg or scissor jack in the rear, right rear, left rear, and you use that to stabilize it. So you'd already have your RV level, and it would be in place. Your tires, if you have to raise them up off the ground, you know, with 
ever how you do that. I'm going to talk about that in episode 48, whether it's wood or plastic pads, whatever it might be. So you have a level or very close to level. On my trailer, most of the places I go, I've never had to use wood or putting underneath the tires. I mean, I do put something underneath the tires. Um, I use Super Dolly RV pads for that so the tires aren't sitting on the gravel or the dirt. Just get some up off the whatever and easier to put tire covers on. But anyway, so if you have to level it, get it leveled first. And like, well, I guess I was going with my trailer is it's not always 100% level. You know, it's it's close. And I just use the stabilizing legs. I have scissor jacks actually to give it that fine tuning on the level. And really they can do that, but they're not meant to support the weight of the entire trailer or fifth wheel you know they they don't have a high weight rating they're not going to be like a jack to jack it up and repair replace or take a tire and wheel off that's not going to happen well it might but it would probably tear up pretty easy and you would certainly wouldn't want to be find yourself in that position so most rvs come with them but if they don't they're easy they're bolt-on items you know the a frame or the uh scissor jack type or the I think I referred to mine as an A-frame. I think I meant scissor jack. And then just a single leg, the single stabilizer leg. You know, either one of those, if it comes with it, great. But if you have to bolt them on, go ahead. They're not hard. And bolting them on is a lot easier later on to take them off if you tear one up. And chances are you will sooner or later. And the ones that get welded on, you know, there's a bracket welded to the RV. And each brand of these, let's say, scissor jacks are different. They don't make them identical. So you, if you're going to just try to unbolt the parts and replace the parts without replacing that bracket, it becomes very difficult to do. And when they build the RVs, they weld everything on, which is fine. But just keep that in mind. If you have to replace one, you're going to have to probably cut the weld off or cut the bracket off and then bolt one on. But if you're doing it after the fact, you know, you've already bought the RV, it didn't come with them, bolting them on is fine. Just make sure the holes are nice and the bolts are super tight. Grind the holes down where you drill them through so they're smooth, so the jack is flush against the frame. You don't want it to rock a little bit on the frame. And you should be good to go. And now, these are really important to have. You know, they're kind of looked at as kind of a little cheapy thing on an RV, but they're actually a pretty nice little deal to have. You know, back before they made scissor jacks and single leg jacks, everybody carry what were called stacker jacks generally made by camco or something similar to it you'd have four of them and they're kind of like the same type of jack using for uh supporting a vehicle after you jack it up except they're aluminum you know kind of lightweight small in fact they're not really that popular anymore because they're all the trailers come with scissor jacks or single leg jacks something to stable or a jack stabilizer they say jacks and i meant stabilizers So it's a lot nicer than having to walk around with the four independent jacks and setting them underneath the trailer, putting them on blocks of wood and, you know, screwing them up. What a pain. So we have it made today a little bit easier. And, you know, most of these jacks have like a three-quarter inch nut that you put a, a, a bar on with a socket end and you crank it. You can do it by hand. Or you can get a drill, a cordless drill, and do it with a drill. Just get an adapter that goes from the drill, or you know, to, that'll just go into your drill, then uh, attach to a socket. You just put it on there and wind them up, wind them down. And I've found that sometimes, depending on your drill and so forth, it might not get them all the way cranked up to where you want it to, you know, get that fine tuning. So you might still have to use a ratchet with a, a socket on it, but it's still easier to wind it up with the drill than using a ratchet the entire way up and the entire way down. And I know this is basic stuff. A lot of you guys already know this, but these things are important. They do break from time to time, but they are not jacks. And there's different variations of them. At the end of the day, they almost all do the same thing. Some of them have a, a fatter foot or a bigger foot which is great, but you know, you can put a piece of wood or a plastic pad underneath the foot to accomplish the same thing. So it kind of depends on what your cup of tea is and how the RV came. Mine, I carry the super dolly RV pads and I just throw one underneath one under each jack leg or stabilizer leg when I stabilize it. 
when it's not on the dirt, doesn't want to push into the dirt or the gravel, you know, it, the pad takes up that weight. And, you know, there's some cool additions to these, though. This is where it gets kind of nice. These things stabilize the RV to a great dizzy RV. Here I just said trailers or fifth wheels, and I called it an RV. So the stabilizers help a great deal in stabilizing the trailer or fifth wheel. It's not going to be 100%, but it's going to get it real nice. It's going to be better than it was just sitting on two wheels with your tongue jack or your uh, uh, landing gear on a fifth wheel. But really to finish it off and get the RV where it's solid, if you're going to be out long enough where you feel it's worthwhile, I mean, I don't generally go RVing or camping for weeks at a time. It's more like a few days here, a few days there. So it's not as critical to me. And, you know, don't have kids running around in the trailer, things like that. So it doesn't feel like you're on a boat at sea. But B&L products, they make um, a couple different items. One's called the full-timer, one's called the weekender. And these are components that add on to your stabilizers and help lock them into place. They actually attach to the stabilizer and the frame of the trailer or fifth wheel. And so it keeps that from moving. So that really locks it down. And it also works with landing gear as well. And not only do they have that, but um, Lipper Components has one called JT Strongarm. JT Strongarm was actually the original one that came out. And theirs is pretty nice too. And these things, whether it's the B&L or the JT Strongarm, they work very nice. They kind of add that final touch to stabilizing the trailer or fifth wheel. And then, of course, there's wheel chocks that can go between the wheels and actually tighten up between the two, or I should say tires, and they tighten up between the tires, and they keep the tires from moving at all, which is pretty nice. And then there's wheel chocks that can go on the front and rear of the tires. Um, if you have a tandem axle, you might be inclined to put one in front and rear of each tire or just the front and rear of the two tires, if that made sense. But, you know, so it's stabilizing it. It's going to help lock the trailer or fifth wheel in place, and it's not going to move. And it's nice, you know, doing certain things. Someone's walking across the room while someone's trying to pour something in a glass. If that trailer moves a lot, you know, it could be that difference between spilling or not spilling. And, and another side of this, which, you know, you're probably not going to have this happening very often, but I know from experience out installing window covers, and it's especially window covers, you know, you're drilling holes in the side of the RV. The The people who own the RV are inside of it. They're moving around. And you go to drill, and the RV starts moving. You know, literally, you know, your drill's like moving across the top of the surface. That's how much RVs can move. You know, it's not just a little fraction. So in these RVs, typically, I notice they're uh, usually not stabilized that well. They maybe have the stabilizers down, but they've done nothing with the tires to lock them into place. You know, they've just gone for the basic, which I, I get it, you know. But, you know, they're not worried about someone drilling on the side of their RV all the time. But I'm just telling you that because it does make a difference. There is quite a bit of movement. You know, it can be in at the top of the RV at the roof. You know, it could be moving a, two or three inches. It's not going to feel like that on the floor. But the higher you get, the more it moves. You, it becomes more visible. And so, you know, when going to drill a hole in the side of the RV, you don't want it moving. So, you know, we'd have to ask the customer, hey, can you just kind of sit down for a little bit or maybe go outside and then we get all done and everything's fine. So that stabilizing is important. It's not, you know, the end of the world if you don't, but it definitely makes a difference. And you want your RV level. You definitely want it level. And another thing I forgot to mention too is when you're leveling your RV, you know, you're probably going to have levels mounted on the outside. You might buy something from you know, a company where it's LED or some sort of laser type level you mount on the side of the RV. Um, Hopkins make ones that, that's pretty cool. Talk about it briefly in the next episode. You know, these are great and they make leveling the RV easier. Now, I use my tongue jack. It has a level on there and I just look at that and it's, once it's pretty close, I go inside and here's where it's important. You have to put a level in the refrigerator. You know, they make bullseye levels is what they're called. They're round, and they go on top. You put them in the freezer, and you just leave it in there. But your refrigerator is what you want leveled first. So that's the most important thing because technically, if the refrigerator is level, the RV will be level. 
You don't want the RV level and the refrigerator out of level. It's horrible for the cooling units. It's going to minimize the life of it. It won't work as well. An RV refrigerator is designed to work the best when it's level and last the longest when it's level. You don't have to have a level when you're not using it, but when you're using it, it needs to be level. So level, so make sure your refrigerator is level before you do anything else. And when I say that, I mean, if you're going to add on, you know, um, levels on the outside of the RV, maybe put one on the side in the front or even the Hopkins one, you have to get the RV level first. So when you put your levels on, they're accurate. It's just like on my trailer. I said I use the levels on top of the tongue jack. Well, I calibrated that with the refrigerator being level and then i set that because it's adjustable where it's level when the refrigerator's level you know it's not a hundred percent but i always go back inside look at the refrigerator but it gives you a nice little barometer you know get your bearings when you're when you're setting up the rv or your trailer and fifth wheel so you're not chasing your tail if you will you have a couple levels to really indicate how close you are then you go inside look at the refrigerator and that's the final say or you can have someone inside you know shouting out right left front rear how to level it you know except having someone inside probably be your wife or your spouse and maybe that won't work out so good that might turn into a big giant argument divorce you know next thing you know you're fighting over who gets the rv you know, they used to say when walkie-talkies first came out and people started to use RV, they just caused divorces. You know, there's, I remember a RV store I had in San Bernardino, California. Husband and wife out there backing up to use the dump station. They have walkie-talkies. You know, he's screaming at her. She's screaming at him, and no one's paying attention. Next thing you know, they run into a sign or hit the fence. Then <laughs> they're fighting about that, whose fault it was. So, you know, be cautious. You don't want to get a divorce over leveling your RV or backing it up, or whatever it might be. So that's kind of the take on stabilizers, and there's you know several different brands, um, one brand being better than the other. You know, BAL is probably the best. This, their stuff seems to be a little heavier duty. But, you know, a lot of RVs come with the cheaper stabilizers on them. Um, I wouldn't change mine, you know, Oh, look, this one doesn't look so good. I'm going to go out and buy new ones. I want to do that. You know, maybe if you ever tear some off or you have to replace them, bend them up, maybe then look at upgrading, you know, going to a better quality one. But I think at the end of the day, any brand is probably going to be good because, you know, Husky is a brand out there. It's not a high-end brand, but it's a good brand. You know, um, there's Amco makes them, Lippert Components makes them, BAL makes them. Um, there's some other off-name brands um, that aren't all that popular. Um, Ultrafab, they make them. You know, so just buy what works. Look at the weight rating of them and base it on that. Don't look at the, the, the steel, how thin it is or thick it is. Cause they're all going to work about the same. And like I said, you know, I'm not real particular about them. Um, BAL is probably the best, though. Oh, and Stromberg Carlson makes some. So you have a lot of different choices there. And you're not going to find all those choices in most RV stores. They might carry one or two of them, um, but they're not going to carry all of them. So even trying to match one up, if you tear one up, might become a little bit of a chore. So I don't even worry about that. Just replace it. Get another one in there so you can enjoy your RVing. These are things that are important, but they they shouldn't be keeping you up at night. They certainly don't keep me up at night, well, other than when I'm thinking about the podcast. But, you know, you want to make sure it works. It's there. If you tear one up, don't spend days trying to shop around, find the exact same replacement, you know, because you're going to have to drag that around. And if they don't have it in stock, they're not going to be able to help you, you know, so you're going to have to know all the brands, see what stores have the brands. So just... You know, make it work. As long as there's something there, that's what's important because these things really do make life easier, make life a whole lot easier. And then, you know, the JT Strong Arms, the BAL um, stabilizers, the full-timer and the weekender, they act add to that stabilization, the tire chocks that go in between the two tires. And those, again, I'd recommend BAL on that. They um, have really good ones. So... You know, with that being said, enjoy your RV. Look at these things as tools to make the weekend better. 
it shouldn't take you hours to level out your to stabilize and level your RV. It should take you know minutes. It shouldn't be a long process. You know, while you're doing that, your spouse can be doing something else, getting ready to just enjoy the weekend or whatever it is, the week you're doing, a month. But just enjoy it. And that's really what the RV lifestyle is about, man. There's a lot of work that goes into this. But, you know, enjoy it while you're there. Don't be working on the weekends, fussing and struggling with things that you can prepare yourself for before you ever leave town. You know you have a bad stabilizer? Fix it before you go. Don't screw around with it while you're there. Frustrating for you, frustrating for the family, and ruin the trip. So, hey, you know, this um, episode, as always, was brought to you by Radio Arizona RV. I am the sponsor of the show and also the host. This is Eric Stark. So you've been listening to the RV Maintenance and Education Show for the Do-It-Yourselfer on Radio Arizona RV. And as I said earlier, you can listen to it on any of the major podcast channels, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, all of the above, or you can just go to RadioArizonaRV.com. And, of course, when you go to our website um, to listen to the episodes, or maybe just go there periodically, because there's a lot more in the show notes than there is when you listen just to the podcast on, let's say, iTunes. You're hearing stuff, but in, when I write up the show notes, I add things, and it's in some cases it's not going to be as in-depth as the episode, but I might throw in some other stuff that, I didn't mention, and there's always links to the products I'm talking about, or in this case, there's a lot of stabilizers. I probably won't have links to all the manufacturers, but, you know, I'll, li- I'll list their name at least. But there's things there that give you a little more information. It helps you to become better acquainted with it. It saves you time of doing research when you can just go to the website, Radio Arizona RV, and find the links to the products you need. And in a lot of cases, it's not even links to our own website for selling them to you. It's just links to the manufacturer website so you can get the information that you want. And if you would decide you want to order them, if you don't find them on one of our websites, you can always call us. Any of the stuff we can do over the phone. And, of course, when you're at Radio Arizona RV, sign up for our email list. Sign up for the newsletter. You're not going to get spammed. Um, (laughs) You're not going to get emails every day. So I encourage you to sign up so you so you're on our list. Um, I've been working on a lot of different stuff. We're kind of changing how we're doing things here, and we're going to start sending out emails on a regular basis. Right now it's been spotty at best. But we want to keep you informed. You know, I enjoy doing this, and it benefits the RVers who do listen. And share it with others. You know, let other people know about the show. And just... You know, sign up, check from check in from the website from time to time. Like I said, you're not getting everything. You're not getting the full flavor when you're just listening to the podcast. Go to the website and see what else we have to offer. In fact, we have several different websites, and they're all listed at Radio Arizona RV as well because we do a lot of different things here. Sell RV parts, make slide-out awning fabrics. You know, we are a huge reseller of uh, Solera awning fabrics. We do a ton of stuff. Manufacture sunshade things. Sunshade products for RVs, sunshade things. That sounds bad, huh? And then we also do marine cordage. So that's enough of all the uh, the propaganda here. So, again, hey, I want to thank you for listening today. This is Eric Stark with the RV Maintenance and Education Show for the Do-It-Yourselfer that you can find at RadioArizonaRV.com.